Western Wall, or the Wailing Wall, as it's sometimes called, is the most sacred place to the Jewish people today because it's all that's left of what once was the complex of the Second Temple. is not just a miracle worker, he is God. Because only God can command nature, and only God could still a storm. Jesus says very clearly in this passage, nobody knows the time. So don't waste your time trying to guess the time. Be ready all the time because I could come at any time. Who raised that boy? <laughs> My sister did. <laughs> um, in the last few days, you have overwhelmed us with stories about my dad's life. I want to share with you the story about how he died. Because of all the books he wrote, of all the messages I heard him preach, of all the places he took us in the world to show us that Jesus was real and the Bible was true. Nothing has ever convinced me more that heaven is real and the Bible is true than the way I saw my dad die. He passed from this life bound by time into eternity we watched him being ushered into the throne room of God, and there was no fear. My son said at bed, he, he said, I'm not afraid to die anymore watching Papa. You could look into his eyes and see he had no fear of what he was facing. We all experienced the most incredible joy and peace the best way I could explain it, it was kind of like giving birth to my children, except I was bringing them into a world that's fallen, and we were sending him into a world that was perfect. For our family, it was the highest act of worship that we have ever been able to be a part of. As Pastor Jonathan shared on Monday, the doctors didn't give us good news. They put him on a ventilator to try to preserve him until the family could get there. Our biggest fear was that we would never hear him speak again. But because of all of you in this room and those of you watching today, hundreds and thousands of people started praying for him. On Wednesday, mom woke up and she said, I think God's about to do something amazing. She said, I feel the power of thousands of people praying. And the very next day, they were able to take the ventilator off. That rarely happens. He went into the hospital because he couldn't breathe. And on Thursday, the ventilator came out and he was able to talk to us. His first word was unbelievable. He kept saying unbelievable. We thought he meant we said, Dad, yeah, getting that tube out must feel really unbelievable. He said, no, I haven't been explaining the second coming good enough. 
Heaven is unbelievable. And as Josh shared, we don't know what happened while he hung between life and death. What we do know is that he came back with an enthusiasm to tell us there was so much more to tell about where he was going. He told his doctor, I thought I was raptured, but what am I, I'm back here. I don't understand why I'm back here. And after laying in bed for several days sedated, he tried to push himself out of bed and strain and said, I'm ready to rapture. Come on, let's go. How do we do this? We said, Papa, just lay down. Jesus is coming for you. You don't have to go to him. And then as we prayed and sang over him in that room, he started to speak words of blessing over every family member. God in his mercy allowed every single child and grandchild to get there in time. It was a miracle alone that in one single day, every flight into Lynchburg was on time. <laughs> and I wanna share with you some of those words that he shared. We got so excited when he was talking, and Linda and I were writing notes, and I think we thought we were going to have part two to um, future glory. And he said, no, he said, I came back for my family. And I realize that not everybody gets this experience, not even every believer. You may be unconscious, you may um, not have your full mental capacity. And so we knew that this was a gift that God gave us because of your prayers. And it's a gift that we want to steward well. And that's why we wanted to share it with you. Mom, I'll never forget him kissing your lips for the last time in 56 years. And he said, Donna, I love you. I really, really love you. If you know my mom, you know she's the backbone of this family. If my dad were here today, he'd say, don't celebrate me, celebrate her. I couldn't do anything without her. He couldn't even make a piece of toast without her. Mom, you cared for him selflessly. And in the days ahead, we will care for you. We affectionately call Grammy the tank, not because of her physical appearance. She's the cutest little thing. But because no matter what life throws at her, she keeps claiming the faithfulness of God. Grammy, we know we had those miracles this week because you believed that we could. We love you. We really, really love you. Andy and Jeff, I felt like I was standing on holy ground when dad looked both of you in the eyes and said, you are the family now. I always thought he was real quick to give Linda and I away in marriage to you too. <laughs> but I think he saw in you that you had the conviction, compassion, and character to go the distance. He had no fear or worry because he knew we were in great hands with the two of you men. Thank you for the decisions you helped us make this week. Thank you for comforting us. We trust you and we respect you. Linda, where are you? Um, my big sister is my hero. She always has been. And never more than how she handled herself this week. Dad had been sedated for 24 hours. Most of us didn't see his eyes, as Vernon said. Well, one of the highlights of my week was picking Linda up late at the airport and walking into Dad's room. We snuck in at night, and as soon as Linda walked in the room, Dad opened his eyes like it's time to have a party. <laughs> you always lit up the room for him. You shared his love for people and his love for excitement. He always lit up when he saw you, and she showed us he's still there. <laughs> He was so happy to see you. John, you can sing <laughs> still. Um, it was an honor to be in the room with you when dad spoke his last words to you. He looked at you and said, John, you are my son, my only son. 
That means I love you with all of my heart. I felt like it was kind of sacred, so I left the room to leave you man to man. And when I came back, he was so excited. He said, did you know John is a counselor? He helps hundreds of people. He's saving Mary. He was so proud of you, John. You carry his ability to make people feel seen and valued. There's never any judgment around you. You made us calm, and you make everyone feel accepted. And I loved having this last two weeks with you. Amanda, I used to always ask Dad, what was the best day of your life? He said it was a tie between Jerry Falwell asking him to teach the Sunday school class at Thomas Road and the day John married Amanda. The last words he said about you is, Amanda is beautiful. She's capable of doing anything and making any idea work. She's competent and intelligent and charming. He was enthralled by you. He loved listening to your reasoning and listening to your ideas and championing your ideas. If he were here today, he would tell you how proud he is, what a great mom you are, and what a perfect match you've been for John. Jenny Penny, We were all in the room when Papa talked about you. Do y'all remember? He said, Jen is a glorious angel. He said, Jen gets it. He kept telling us, God is God and we are not. And he said, Jen understands the awe and wonder of God. And she reflects it everywhere she goes. He spoke about you, Jen, as if you had one foot in heaven and one foot on earth. I think Linda even said, Dad, she's still alive. She's still here. Um, because you see and experience things we miss because of fear and busyness, and our brains just get in the way. He loved you, Jen. He was proud of you, and he believed that you would have a ministry to the world. Joshua Allen. You have hung on his every word since you were a little boy. We were praying and singing over Papa when Papa interrupted us and pointed at Josh and said, it's time for Josh to soar. I don't know if you know this, Josh, but whenever Papa would speak at funerals, he would read from Joshua chapter 1. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. It's time for you to lead these people. When a great leader passes, a great responsibility falls to the next generation. I know you feel the weight of that, and I want you to know that we are all here to cheer you on, surround you, and support you in whatever God calls you to do. If Papa were here, he would tell you you can have his Braves hat, the proverbial mantle that he wore to the end. I think he's in heaven asking God to answer your prayer to give you a double portion of his spirit. He might say, you should get your PhD. I worked too hard to change his family legacy. But whether you ever take another class or not, Josh, we all know that you have been soaring since you were 11, and you chose to lean into God instead of getting angry at the accident your family went through. Brooke, our newest happy Heinsen, that's our family group chat. My girls were just amazed at how you served our family this week. You've only been married to Josh for six weeks and you took off work, your own granddad was in the hospital, and you served us. You noticed everything, and you helped us cheer Papa on. We are so blessed to have you in this family. 
Papa thought you were amazing. And we all know that Josh will soar higher because of you. Allie was a wooza, as Papa called you. The reason I knew that Papa was really full of the Holy Spirit, he would not normally tell you to die for the truth. He was the one telling you to be safe because nobody would be more excited to die for the truth than Allie. He was the one who'd wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me how close rockets were landing to wherever you were serving with Samaritan's Purse. I love that in the last days, he kept calling for you. He wanted you right by his side. He kept saying, where's Allie? I need Allie. You made him feel safe. And I know that nothing will make you more excited than risking your life for the gospel. I think if Papa could talk to you today, he'd say, you've only just begun to glimpse the adventure that God has for you. Ashley, I did okay this week until I walked into Papa's office at home and saw you were on his last to-do list. It said, have dinner with Ashley. And it was checked off, he got to do it. He loved taking you to dinner and lunch. He would always call me afterwards and tell me how amazing you were. She's brilliant, but she's compassionate. She's good at taking what's complicated and explaining it into words. And I would always say, well, what did you talk about? And he'd say, that's between me and her. You knew him in a unique way that few of us did because you asked deeper questions and you sat still long enough to listen. He absolutely adored you. He loved having you sing over him and pray over him. You had a lot of special alone time with him. And I don't know what all words passed between you, but I know if he were here today, he'd say, Ashley, can we go to dinner one last time? <laughs> JD, I know what Papa would say to you because he said it right over there where we sit with Papa and Grammy in church. Pastor Jonathan was reading from 1 John chapter 2 about young men in the faith. The verse says, young men, you are strong. God's word is alive in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Papa leaned over to me, and he said, that's JD. He's strong, not just physically, but in his faith and in wisdom. He said, the word lives in JD. I've seen his Bible open by his bed. He reads it almost every night. You don't just read it, J.D., you actually do it. We all also got to hear Papa look at you and say, keep running. I don't think he just meant because you're a fast runner. I think he meant keep overcoming in life. He told you that you would do great things. He said, keep serving people. And J.D., when you were little, you always prayed a prayer that a million people would come to know God. And Papa believed that God would help you do that. Evan and Finn, you guys deserve an award <laughs> for the hours you sat still this week. Papa kept saying over and over, so Evan and Finn will carry my name. That's so cool. <laughs> Evan, you believed that Papa would get a miracle because you had a fortune cookie at a restaurant at the beach that said you're about to see a miracle. Because you believed, Evan, we got that miracle. He came off the ventilator. You walked into his room so brave. 
Your words were so kind and so insightful. You were his mini-me. When you talk, everybody listens. And Evan, I believe that if Papa was here today, he'd say to you, keep believing in miracles. And God will keep showing you that he is with you. You're going to be a great Heinzen. You already are. And Finn, you might be the littlest, but we all know you're probably the mightiest <laughs> and probably the best hope to write a bunch of books since you're already a writer and an inventor. Finn, the last thing I heard Papa say about you, he said, I can't wait to go to heaven and have energy because I really want to play baseball with Finn. Tell him I'll be waiting on first base for him. On Friday night, just after midnight, Papa started to take his last breaths. God in his grace allowed us to surround his bed and what I thought would be traumatic, difficult, was the most glorious moment of my life. All of a sudden, he opened his eyes and he looked up to heaven. His face looked like it was smiling and his eyes never moved. He used to sign all his letters, keep looking up. And that's what he did. He kept looking up, and for about 10 minutes, we cheered like we were cheering an Olympic runner across the finish line. I can't imagine how loud it was in that ICU room. Brooke got us going. We said, run, Papa, run, go, you can do it, go, go. Well done. And the moment he took his last breath, Instead of being sad, I was filled with the most amazing peace and joy. It was like we got to go to heaven ourselves for a minute. And I realized in that moment that heaven isn't something we make up to make us feel better. It's not some delusion Christians come up with. It is real. I saw it in my dad's eyes, and I will never doubt it. And if Papa were here today to talk to all of you, he'd say, I didn't describe it good enough. It's a whole lot better. And he'd say, keep looking up.